Thank you. I think we are a bit tired after such a long morning with so many, many inputs, many thoughts, many reflections. And I thought that it could have been by the end of the morning session to present some PowerPoints that can help us in a better way to understand what we are talking about and what I would like to share with you this morning regarding our being together because we want in a very special way to share with you the challenge of resettling those who have been trafficked with a very special reference to Nigeria. We have spoken quite a lot about so many issues regarding prostitution, regarding slavery, regarding laws, regarding, but now there is something that needs to be done in a very special way to help young people in a special way to regain their life and their dignity. But we need to offer opportunities. And in a very special way, I want to thank this particular place that for the fifth time since Pope Francis spoke against human trafficking as the slavery of today's world, we have met in order to discuss, to deepen, to offer position, to offer new ideas so that we can really work for a better society where no longer people can be called slaves, but people can be called brothers and sisters. So I'm very grateful for this opportunity to be here again today to share with you what we gain after so many times of being together. Now, I am a missionary. I'm a missionary, a consolata missionary sister that after spending 24 years in Africa, now in 1993, I started to work on the street in Italy. I was called to come back to Italy and to become a missionary in my own country. I had no idea what was happening on the street of my own country until I started dealing with this terrible phenomenon that changed my life, changed my idea of being a missionary in Africa. But it was only through the help of a young lady that came in Turin where I was sent to work in a Caritas Center in 1993. I didn't want to be there. I wanted to return to Africa. I thought I was uh, a, an immigrant in my own country. But this lady, called Maria, helped me to understand the life and the suffering of what was happening in Italy. So she helped me to discover the world of the night and of the street. And my missionary life changed, changed completely because I came to understand that though I was aware that the trafficking in person and modern day slavery do not only refer to women involved in the sex trade, but also trafficking for unpaid uh, labor, illegal child adoption, organ smuggling, baggage, and so on, you know, I came to understand that my life as a missionary in a very special way, it had to deal with these women that I used to see, but I didn't know what was happening to them. I didn't know their background. And so now I started dealing with the help of Maria that really helped me to understand the world of the night and on the street. And my missionary life changed because I came to realize and I came to know different stories, different faces, different names. And some of these cases of extraordinary violence, including mercy. This young lady that was shot on the street and she became paralyzed, how she was reduced on the street. She asked to return to Nigeria to see her two children. We helped her to go back 
And I visited her my first time I visited Nigeria after starting with this work in uh, Turin. And uh, in the year 2000 in Rome, I went to look for her in her village. She was like a skeleton. She was just her eyes, surprised to see me there. And she said, sister, how is it that you were able to come to see my, my house, to see me? I said, yes. I wanted to come to see you, to ask you forgiveness for how my people, how they used you, how they reduced you. And so I want to ask forgiveness. Two months later on, she was already dead leaving two children. The story of Jennifer, 21, is one of the most recent cases of the voluntary repatriation that I'm going to speak about because it is uh, you know, a very important uh, activity that we have just started to give them a future to people who can no longer remain in Italy. And this uh, uh, Jennifer, before leaving for Nigeria, she left a lot a note to the sister of the shelter she has been staying with, the shelter in Tuno, where we were preparing her uh, documents to go back because she wanted to go back to her country. But now we have problem, progress, um, projects for sending them back uh, to their own country. She wrote a note and she said, thank you because you did not let me die on the street. This is exactly what is happening to many of these young people, but Gloria really died on the street. She was killed by one of the clients. She threw, he threw her down from a bridge because she didn't want to accept his demands to be taken uh, into uh, his home. And so this beautiful Glo uh, Glory, 22 years dead because killed. Another one, another woman, uh, this is what we really mean, women rescuing, promoting, and protecting women. Because unfortunately, there are women destroying the life of other women. We want to be women protecting and rescuing women. The story of Linda, it's a very sad story. A mother of three children. She was killed because she did not pay her amount of money due to the traffickers. She refused to pay 43,000 euro because she didn't have them. But now, after refusing, after discussing with the traffickers, telling them, I cannot pay you this money, she was found dead, smashed with uh, uh, the following day after having this collision with the traffickers. Here, at her funeral, a bishop from Africa, even though it was not from Nigeria, when he knew that there was a funeral for a Nigerian lady, he said, this is a daughter of my own, of my own uh, country. This is a daughter of Africa. I want to give her a blessing, a funeral. And as also a warning to other people that these people are not supposed to come and to die on the street. But unfortunately, this is what is happening. Another young girl that was uh, having a car accident and now by leaning down, visiting her, she lost her mem memory. I really felt what it means to be good Samaritans today. We really have to lean down on the wounds of these young people, telling them, we understand, you are not alone, we suffer with you, we share your state and your situation because you are children of the same father as me and you and all the others. Now, but we are aware that this kind of slavery has a, a terrible impact of these young people because they have abuse, murder, sexual transmitted disease, death, injury by road accident, unwanted pregnancy, forced abortion. And here it's how we destroy the beauty, the dignity, the life of these young people that came to Italy hoping to have a future and they find themselves on the street. But we have also some very positive uh, uh, solution. Now, one of these girls, even though she had a very sad story, a beautiful girl, 
just dressed like a queen. She was 19 years when she came to Italy. Nobody knew she was pregnant. Six months pregnant, she was on the street. And uh, nobody was aware of the suffering, the trauma she was carrying within herself at the age of 93, uh, of uh, 19. So we were able to rescue her and to put her in one of our shelters. I'm going to explain you what we mean by shelter. And uh, after giving birth to her child, being uh, reuniting her to her family, because at the beginning she didn't want the, her mother to know what really happened to her, now we were able to have her baptized by Pope John II, the last uh, baptism, the last Easter baptism he had in the Easter village, Vigil 2004. But what was really striking us, what was really, I was really moved when at the moment of the offertory, when the other people were carrying the gifts for the mass, she brought to the altar her child. And the fruit of her suffering, but also the fruit of her reconciliation, their re, uh, rejoin you know, the dignity of a real human being, being just standing in front of the Pope, after being standing in front of so many people that abused her, destroyed her life and her future, but she was rescued. And that is the important thing because we are facing with a global and local phenomenon. Now, it has been mentioned many times in the last few days. It was mentioned even this morning, so many thousand of these young people that are coming to Europe, are coming to Italy, are going elsewhere, hoping to have a future, and at the end they find themselves on the street. And we have to consider the causes of human trafficking that is the extreme poverty of many of these developing, from many of these developing countries that urges in a certain way young people that are really uh, dreaming for a better life, for a better future, and instead of uh, having no education or uh, having a minimum or total absence of education and work opportunities, so now they discuss, they decide to put themselves in the hands of some of these traffickers on the side of, of the madams in order to dream, to come to Europe for a future, because in their own country, life is really difficult. difficult. The families are very big, and so they decide to come to Europe hoping to be able to help their, themselves and, the fam and their families. So Europe is, Europe is a country of origin, transit, and destination, because there are people that are from a uh, country of origin, transit, and destination. Nigeria, in a special way, is a country of origin, because it represents the push, the supply side of the equation. And that is to say they provide the breeding ground of poverty which traffickers comb to find potential victims. The women are easy targets, vulnerable from utter poverty, lack of education, job opportunities, gender inequality, discrimination, and war. And we know what is really happening nowadays. Now, it was so clear what happened yesterday. Now, we, as they try to have to move towards the promised land, to cross transit countries, to cross the Mediterranean Sea, and uh, we know, and yesterday, really, I cried to see what was happening to many, many of them, seven 100 people that once again drowned on the sea, that the Mediterranean Sea is becoming the new cemetery for thousands of young people because they just risk hoping to come for a better life. Instead, the traffickers are the ones gaining. Look how they cross the Sahara Desert. And if somebody 
does not manage to hold on this big glory they just left, they are just left behind. So now these are the situation which really have to ask us, but what are we doing? How can we keep on people dying in, in, a, in the sea? How can we people not to do something in order to help them and in order to arrive in a safe way if they are running away from danger, from war, from famine, from any kind of poverty, and they find death, death as they travel the countries of transit or they die on the sea or they die in Italy as well. So now this is already, sorry, it was... Now, women on sale. Yes, it was said many times this morning what it means to be women on sale. People that can choose what they want, how they want, how long they want, and after they are still thrown again on the street. But now, really, what is slavery? Slavery, it's a chain. And the chains of the modern-day slavery is made up of many links. And these links have names. The victims, the exploiters, the consumers, the society, the state, and the church, together with our silence that breeds complicity. This means slavery. So we think that sometimes slavery, it's only for the ones who are uh, transporting the victims. We all have this, a chain is made of links. But every link has a name. So now we are also part of this link because sometimes our silence breeds complicity. When we are not courageous enough to speak out and to speak against slavery, we are also in favor of what is going to happen. Many young people from Latin America, from Asia, you know, they are minors. It was spoken, we spoke about, you know, trafficking of minors. So this is exactly what is happening. But this global business, it's a supply and demand business. So I am not going to talk about this, but now I can just show you this picture. When somebody in Italy started saying, but it's much better to have them in apartments or to have them in a proper place so that can be protected, to have these young women on the window screen. I felt indignant as a woman. How can I we accept, how can I accept, you know, that a man can stop in front of the window to choose a woman to be used, as he can go and choose a dress to be wear. So it's something that can really help us to understand. We can no longer accept the demand, because the demand drives supply. And the consumer is the one that in the chain of slavery of the third millennium, uh, the client is one of the strongest link. In reality, the, he supports and fuels the sex industry. He's the stronger link because he's the one. I remember one night when I used to visit, I was in Italy, in Rome, sorry, I was in Turin at the beginning of my life in Italy, and I met one, many girls on Salaria uh, in the evening, and one of them said, if for a month I was here on the street, and nobody could come and look for me. Now, my madame was not having any interest to let me stay, to bring me here, and to let me stay on the street. So this is exactly what we really need to understand. The life of the street is terrible because it makes all these young people to be violent, to be aggressive, to be vulgar, because this is the rule of the street. They are no longer considered people. They are no longer considered human beings because they face with a double, a double situation. Clients looking for them. People despise them, destroying their life, telling them all bad words as if they are there because they want to be there. They don't realize they are there because somebody puts them there and somebody uses them there. Now, because we have also in countries of destination, 
We need to offer opportunities. Without offering opportunities, we cannot solve the problem because we cannot keep on damaging the life of these young people on the street. We cannot just have compassion. We cannot just say, why are you here on the street? Why you don't leave the street if you don't give us opportunity? So in the very beginning, when we started realizing that in Italy we were having 30, 40, uh, 40 50,000 of Nigeria, early 90s, on the street, 59%, they were Nigerians on the street at that time. So we said, no, we have to do something. We have to take them out. We have to offer them opportunities. And so now, with our intervention, with our lobbies, we contacted women parliamentarians. Because these girls that uh, was running away, were running away from the street and they didn't want to be there. They asked the policemen to help them, to give them some other opportunities. The policemen started knocking at the door of the convents so that we could accept them, we could welcome them. But at that time, we didn't know what was happening. For us, it was a great risk to accept these young people on the street. But it was when we could hear their cry, we could see their story, we could know how much they suffered, that we were able to realize that we had nothing to do than with the prostitution, that we were dealing with a terrible new form of slavery. So by contacting these parliamentarians, mainly women, we said, you have to do something. We are receiving them in our houses. We can welcome them. We can teach them. We can rebuild their life, but we cannot give them a legality. So now, at this point, now there was this kind of meeting, and we had a legislation that you are going to find on your papers, a legislation that is recognizing them in a legal way so that they can have a legal status and Italy is the first one, the first country that is recognizing the reduction to slavery for these women. So we, women religious, in a very special way, we said now we have to work to rescue these people, to offer them life and future. So at the moment, after joining together, in Italy we have 250 sisters belonging to 70 congregations that work in 110 projects. Shelters, small, small shelters, family-like shelters, home that they could regain their life, their dignity, and also their legality. Because the Italian government approved what we call Article 18, that recognizing the reduction to slavery for these victims, now they could really start the way of recuperating their life and their future. But immediately we realized that we needed also to involve sisters in countries of origin in order to be able to work together countries of origin, transit and destination because we are present everywhere. And so this is a very important step we took in the year 2000 when I moved from Turin to Rome to become the sister uh, connecting the work of other sisters in the family life situation that we contacted the sisters in Nigeria to come and see. They came and they saw their young people on the street, full of life, but they are reduced to slaves. And so now by working with them, by seeing how we, in our communities, were really ready to put up the creativity of charity to regain the life, the future, the dignity of these young people, we started working together because we wanted to give the, their life back. And in bondage, we have so many children born that after being born, they started living in freedom together with their mothers. Mothers, many times Nigerians are uh, running away when they become pregnant because they don't want to miss and to lose their children. So the mothers try 
to save the children, but the children are saving the mothers. So both of them are saved. So our houses, the uh, new shelters run by sisters, they are in the same building of the sisters, the sisters' house. Now these uh, children live together, grow together, and they have a future. And in the last 20 years, more than 6,000 women have been helped, rescued, and reintegrated with proper documents in our own society, according to the legislation of the Article 18. But having them in our own shelters, they are recuperating their life, their future, and we train them for their work. We have also sisters, we know, that some of the girls are taken to the detention center of identification and expulsion. So we have sisters from all over the uh, all over the congregations and the countries speaking different languages. So we said we have to be there. We have to go to Ponte Galeria to see what was happening to the women who are there waiting deportation and see what we can do. And since 2003, when we started visiting this temporary detention center in Italy, we were able to be 60 sisters from 26 different countries and 28 congregations. Many times the sisters nowadays say, but we are few, we cannot deal with this. It's something so big, it's going beyond our capacity. We say, let us put our poverty together and it becomes a great powerful richness that can be used to save the life of people. This is Ponte Galeria. No, we meet these people, we pray with them, we talk with them, we listen to them, we cry with them, and we try sometimes to rescue them and to put some of them in our own shelter when there are conditions to help them to get a permit to stay and to work in Italy. We also have a celebration when we are in Ponte Galeria to make them feel that somebody is caring for them. This is Mother's Day last year. We brought to each one of them a rose. Many of them are mothers. And uh, so now remembering Mother's Day for them, it was very moving. And to know that somebody could offer them a rose. Now Christmas, we celebrated them Christmas in this detention center where these women are waiting deportation. And we want to make them feel that somebody is loving them. We know that prophetic role of women religious in counter-trafficking is uh, due to our great strength of networking. It is only if we work together we can really do a lot. Now, for many years we have been used to apply the Article 18 in Italy. But now, since recently, when according to this uh, this economic situation in Italy, it's becoming difficult to reintegrate these young women in Italy. So we started a new project, a new dream. Yes, we started to implement a pilot project for financed and assisted repatriation and reintegration of these young people. You cannot send them back empty-handed. It is a great failure for, for them. So now, in Italy, victims of human trafficking are mainly Nigerian, with no more hope for a proper reintegration because of lack of documents, or a job, or any other financial difficulties. So we said, now we have to invent something else. The project has been supported and implemented by Caritas Italiana, financed by the Episcopal Conference, implemented by a new association, Slaves No More, in collaboration with the Italian Union of Major Superior and the COSDO, the uh, religious sisters in Nigeria. We have started this project because we want to break the chain. We want to be women helping women. Unfortunately, there are so many women destroying the life of other women. And so the strength of networking of women religious against human trafficking that wants to offer opportunity 
to return home safely and with the dignity. So now the new Slaves No More Association aims to build a network between countries of origin, transit, and destination in collaborations with Caritas Italiana, USMI, Talitha Kun, and other organizations dealing with prevention, protection, reintegration to assist the victims of human trafficking. Now the aims of the project, I'm going to leave some of the material that you can see because it's becoming too late and I want to give you some time for also your question. But now this project, this new project has already proved to be very, very useful. The implementation of the project is, uh, the project includes the cost of travel, training, logistical and financial assistance, ensuring that the journey of return is achieved with respect to the dignity of the person and the security of the migrant. So this is a very new project that has really proved to be very, very successful. And the girls who decide to go back, they are not going back empty-handed, but they are going back with a proper project that they can start, uh, live, and uh, work uh, for their life. We had also some of the girls that we were able to rescue from the detention center to put them into this project, they go back and they start uh, again, not to be a failure, but uh, to be really women that can take care of their own families and their own children. Now you see the creativity of charity has no limit. We have to find new ways and means of giving their life back to these young people that uh, have come with a hope and they find themselves on the street, dehumanized people with no longer, no longer uh, able to become and to behave as human beings. Now, when we uh, um, welcome them in our own life, these girls in our own homes, these girls really become new people, new uh, persons with their own life and dignity. The project offers them a new proposal and as we already said, and a few steps have been taken before implementing this project because we want to be sure that the girls is going back with an idea of doing something, of taking care of their life, their family, their children. So we have also a shelter in Nettuno where these young girls that decide to go back to Nigeria, they can stay for a few days, few weeks, while we study with them what they really want to do. And, uh, you know, this is a long story that you will be able to read on my paper. I go ahead. Now, this is one of the shelters that we built also in Benin City. Because when they go back, if they don't have a home, if they don't have a shelter, now many times their parents refuse to receive them, reject them. So with the help of the Episcopal Conference, we were able to uh, build and to run by sister this new shelter. We have also another shelter that you will see all these pictures in Benin City. This is very crucial to have points of reference in countries of origin so that when they go back, they can really have a future. I can see that Sister Monica is here. Now she visited this project in Nigeria to see whether it was functioning properly, whether we could really continue with the project of reintegration. These women, most of the time, they choose to put up a mini, a, a, a mini an industry, a mini market shop, in order to help them to take care of their children. You see, they are very happy to be able to, to get back to their country and to have a future. I just go very quickly because the time is already gone. Now we send mothers with two children. Many of them nowadays go back because in Italy they can no longer support their children because they have no work, they have no money to pay the house rent. So by going back, they are reunited to their own people, to their own families, to their own situation. I think that this should be the future for many of them reintegration in a proper way. 
But this is possible only because building a network. Now we are, we are a network that work not in competition, but in communion. There are sometimes, I'm sorry to say, many organizations that are working in competition. We are want to work in, in this building in communion, just keeping in mind the welfare of these people. We had many initiatives in order to help sisters to work together. A big conference in Rome for 33 sisters from 26 different nationalities, different countries. You see, our richness is this, to work together. And that is why we really feel that we have a great role to play. These sisters has also formed a strong alliance from all over the world, Talitakum. It's uh, uh, sisters from 80 countries that are working with the same aim. Renate, it's uh, the European group of sisters, beautiful group of sisters that are really doing this uh, uh, wonderful uh, job all over the countries. And, uh, we are grateful because the Vatican and the Pope is supporting us very much. We were able to see him and we asked him to have a world day of prayer in order to make the whole church in a special way dealing with this reality. And Pope Francis has given us the opportunity to have this beautiful, this important day that was Bakita Day. We had the last 8th of February in, uh, uh, for our own. Uh, now the rest, uh, you will find all the rest on your paper.